as you will learn, I deleted all of my college work two weeks before the end of the semester last year. Good morning. Welcome to the next episode of Chaotic Seamstressing, where today we are going to make this dress. I've given myself the day. It's already 10 o'clock, which I, I originally told myself yesterday I was gonna start at 4 a.m. to give myself 12 hours. But we're starting at 10. So, basically, what's going on? Uh, I was at a baby shower for one of my family friends and one of the one of their wives asked me if I could make her a dress for a renaissance fair she is going to because I was wearing one of my dresses from my college collection so basically it's something that I've made before but we're gonna be making it smaller so the original dresses that I made for that collection were in a standard fashion world size 18 which when comparing it to let's say regular fashion you're more looking at a size 16 my dress in particular because it had stretch can fit at a wider range so it was made as an 18 but i myself can wear it do i know what standard size i am i don't know probably a 14 at the moment 14 12 but Anyways, so we got to take that dress pattern down all the way down to about a small. So it's a really big jump. However, because we're working with gathers, um, we don't need to change that much. The main part that we're going to be changing about the pattern is how big the main rectangle is, which is the main body of the dress, as well as the sleeve and underarms which is most of the dress because the only other thing are the gores which i'm going to be keeping the same to give it a nice big full skirt but we're not going to be changing it too much we're just going to be decreasing the um decreasing the the width slightly because the length we're still going to be making it a <clears throat> full length to about the ankle so that there's full coverage and it's more you know it works for renaissance it works for regular wear but the fabric that we've got for today's project is this beautiful, I would call it a, like a light denim, a dusty blue color. This is Raimi, which is a, which is another plant fiber. So this is a more sustainable piece. It is also considered to be an alternative to linen, which can be harder to forage, which is the plant which this comes from. I can't remember what it is, but the plant that it comes from is more easily accessible and grows quicker, making it not, I wouldn't say affordable, but it makes it a good alternative to linen. Um, this ran here, I'm in Canada, so this ran for about $29 a meter, which yes, it's a hefty price, but it's a beautiful fabric. It will last a long time, and as it wears just like linen it will continue to soften it will continue to get its own character which is amazing and you got the texture which is great for the renaissance look that she's going to be using this for our goal for today is we are going to spend i'm hoping only 20 minutes trying to figure out the pattern measurements and layout for the dress and then we're going to give ourselves an hour to make a really quick mock-up just to make sure that it fits. And then after we do that, we will hopefully be able to then cut out the pieces, iron them. I'm gonna hopefully try and set up my serger um, and then we'll hopefully get the dress done. I will give myself until, I can give myself until tomorrow to finish, but ideally I would like to get this all done today. But yeah, this is a dress that I've technically sewn six, seven, eight times. I don't remember exactly how I did it. I do mostly remember. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my instructions I wrote for myself or the measurements that are on the pattern. So I'm gonna have to be measuring those out now because those, as we will, as you've either learned or as you will learn, 
I deleted all of my college work two weeks before the end of the semester last year. So I think I do still have the information for this pattern, but I do not have it on my computer. <clears throat> not very helpful, but we have the, one of the original patterns, which this is for the long double puff sleeve with the big cuff. However, the body is the same, the gores are the same, it's just the placement of where I'm gonna put the sleeves and the underarm, underarm gussets. But yeah, we will get on to that. I'm gonna put an episode of Scooby-Doo on to time myself because they're about 20 minutes on. I'm gonna get this pattern made. So let's go. Okay, so I think we have the pattern figured out. So basically, we're gonna have two, there's only one showing here now because I didn't know if that had space, but for the body, we're gonna have two of these rectangles. They're gonna be the full length of the fabric at 54 inches. And then at the top here, we've got a one and a half inch uh, casing for the top elastic. And then we've got 12 inches from the bottom of that to the first elastic casing for the waist, these you'll see will be folded down to create the casings for the waist. Now for the gores, I just kept them the same as I did before, which are alternating uh, right angle triangles that are 10 and a half inches and regular triangles, which are 15 and a half. The two bigger ones are gonna be going in the front and in the back. The other two are gonna be going on the sides. Up here, we have our sleeves, which have turned out being about 16 inches, which are going to be where the casing is. You see that there's a that one and a half inch casing, which will connect up here so that it can be um, kind of like a square neck or an off the shoulder look by about 13 and a half inches long, which is going to get to about just about the elbow when it's all the way up on the, uh, the all the way up on your shoulder. Then we got eight inch underarm gores that will make sure that you have space to move around. It kind of gives a dolman effect, um, which are those kind of like bat wing like sleeves. And then we have our cuffs, which are four inches, which are really big, but that is because I am going to be folding them to the center, which makes them a one inch cuff. And then putting the raw seam allowance inside there. I'm also making them longer or more layered since I'm not gonna be using any interfacing. So by doing that, we're gonna make sure that it's nice and sturdy. And then we have this eight by 26 inch piece of fabric left over. Probably is either, if we've got enough, we're gonna do one big scrunchie or we're gonna cut this in half, sew it on the side, and then we're gonna make a nice full, but uh, smaller width scrunchie. So yeah, that's our pattern. We're gonna, let's go try and make a quick sample to make sure that it fits and then we'll move on to the final fabric. Okay, so actually looking at my camera, uh, I don't have enough space to show you guys me sewing the sample, but I don't really think you want to see that because we're probably going to make mistakes. So I will see you once it's finished and once I've transferred some of these videos onto my hard drive. Okay, and here is the sample. It's been a couple hours, but um, ran into a couple of hiccups. I originally, when I did the pattern, made the sleeves way too short. So I had to go back and recut some new ones. Um, I also added pockets, which took me a minute. They're still too high, but pockets, it took me a minute. But yeah, we're going to see what the customer thinks. I'm good to move on to the final fabric, but I think it looks really cute. That's the sample, and hopefully we'll be able to get at least the pieces cut out tonight of the final fabric and get them all sewn up tomorrow morning. So I'll see you when we start on the final pattern. 
This is the new pattern. So what's changed is that the sleeves have gotten bigger. They're now 20 by 20 inch squares. The rectangles or the gores, or not the rectangles, the triangles, the gores for the dress are now different sizes. So instead of being 10 and a half, this is nine and a half. Instead of being 15 and a half, it is 19 and a half. We still have our eight inch um, underarm gores, an access piece that is eight and a half by 16. And then we've got, uh, which is something I forgot, four was the sleeve cuff, which is four by 14 inches. So it's way bigger than we need, but that'll make sure that we have lots of fabric to make it nice and sturdy. And then we got our pocket pieces. And what that all looks like is this. So this is our main body piece. We've got a one and a half inch casing at the top for the elastic that goes around the neckline. And then we go 12 inches down from this line to here. We do our first three quarter line, then one inch, three quarter, one inch, and then three quarter. These are going to be folded this way. Nope, this way. Top line going down to create our casings for our elastic waist. Then we've got our two different size triangles. The larger one is going to go in the center front and the center back. The smaller ones go on the side seams. And then over here, we've got our two sleeves, which are just squares, the underarm gores that go underneath. We've got the cuffs and we've got the pockets. And this is also our left over, which it will be used if we need it for for something, or we'll turn it into an accessory that will be a little extra bonus. My biggest tip when working with woven fabrics is, as you can see, most of them I didn't cut, I just ripped the fabric. Because when you rip the fabric, when it's a easy woven fabric, you're going to get perfectly straight lines, um, at least going from salvage to salvage. You can't really rip the other way, but you can rip going this way, which is the main, which is the majority of your pieces. And then most of them will all be straight, which means you'll have nice grains, which means everything will flow and fall nicely. We're going to iron everything. We're going to fold these, all of our seam allowances down. There actually should be, I forgot to put it in, but there should also be the one and a half inch casings on the sleeves as well up there at the top, but that's okay. We can do that at the machine, at the, at the iron. Anyways, let's get ironing. Okay, just a small tip if you have a machine that is a front loader like this rather than a top top loader when you put your bobbin in your bobbin case so up at here we're gonna drop it in and you want it to spin clockwise when you're pulling it through the little notch here and then pulling it up here you want to make sure that it's spinning clockwise. This is just going to make sure that the machine will catch the threads correctly and you're not going to end up with a ball of mess. So definitely check if you do get that happening. Make sure that you're turning clockwise and also make sure, just a little test to make sure that your case is uh, doesn't need any tightening, which on the front loaders they have this tightening screw. You're just going to hold it and make sure that it dangles. 
If it and you give it a little shake. And if it starts falling, you're gonna want to tighten that. And if you're when you pull it, if it feels really hard to pull through, you're gonna want to loosen it. Um, this can be done on certain machines, like this machine here, as it's an older one. Whereas for my newer one that you see in the other videos, I I'm not supposed to touch the bobbin case. I just have to play with the the foot pressure and the other thing. I can't remember the word. But yeah, with this one for older machines, a lot of the times you can fix a lot of your problems by just giving this a very light turn. Like very light, like the tiniest of turns. Like if you turn it too much, then you're gonna mess up your case and you're not gonna be able to use it because you're gonna either over tighten it or over loosen it. But yeah, just a little tip when putting that in.
I'm so happy to have been able to gotten the chance to remake these dresses again and fall in love with them once more. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I'll see you in another video.